Welcome to the demonstration movie on using the Linear Momentum Analysis Tool in Ferro Reality from Ferro Technologies. My name is Dean Pearson. Several ways to do analysis for collision investigators in this software product, including simulation. Uh, our current simulation, we've called it 2.5D, and right here you'll see uh, mass. This is the full 3D simulation version. We're currently in beta testing for this. Uh, we should be um, ready to bring it to the market within the next year. We've also got other options here for you including inline momentum or collinear momentum. Today we're going to be looking at simulated angular momentum interactive or SAMI uh, as we call it. So to get our scene going I'm going to bring in a set of points from a staged crash at the exponent test crash facility in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm just going to import the points here. I'm going to change their colors all to black so we can see them more clearly. I'll knock the point size down to 1. And I'm even going to change the texture on my ground plane here just so we can see things like you know, simulated tire marks and the like a little more clearly. So now that I've got my points on the scene, I don't want to keep selecting them, so I'm going to add them to their own layer and lock them down. I'll call this layer points. When I go to my layer manager over here, you'll see I can lock them down. And now I'm, I'm not going to select individual points by mistake. I can just concentrate on the task at hand, which is my momentum analysis. This is, of course, assuming that I've got my reference points uh, lined correctly. Next thing I'm going to do is go to my analysis tab, and I'm going to bring out uh, my momentum system. When I select it, uh, you'll see that a vector system is brought right onto the scene. Uh, over here we've got uh, results we're showing right away. This is a live system. So if I change anything like this approach angle or departure angles or distances, uh, the system updates the results right away. Next, I'll need to attach the vehicles that were actually used in the crash. In this case, there are a couple of old police cruisers. So I go to our database of 27,000 models. And I'm going to select the 1994 Chevy Caprice Classic Sedan. And I'm just going to click Insert. Before I do, though, I'll show you that we get a thumbnail of the vehicle we're searching. And its vehicle specifications are down here. Once I click Insert, you'll notice that the car is attached to the vectors. Unlike some other analysis software, you don't need to move one and then move the whole uh, momentum system over. It's, it's all as one. The other car uh, was exactly the same, uh, so I'll select it. But I'm going to make our what I'll refer to as the target car in this collision red so we can tell the difference when we put them in motion. So now that I've got my vehicles that were involved in the crash, I can adjust for fuel and cargo, passengers, etc. For this crash, they added another 300 pounds, bringing the gross vehicle weight up to about 4,200. And then I just need to place my um, cars on their marks. Before I do that, though, let's bring the um, skid marks into the scene. In order to do so, I'll just click my Measurements tab again, select my log, and I'm going to join by ZX. And you'll now see that all of our evidence is on the scene. So now that we know what we're working from, I'll bring all the vectors uh, approximately on their marks. And you can see this 0.106 here. This represents the cable that brought in our fast moving or bullet car. I want to get that cable coming right out of the rear license plate here. And this 0.102 represents the start of the cable that brought in what I'll refer to as the target car or the slow moving vehicle. Same thing. I want to get this approach angle coming right out of the rear license plate. So by using the rotate and move grips, I can get very precise with the placement of my car. Just double check down here. That looks good. Now we want to snug the cars up so they're just about contacting, just prior to engagement. Like so. When I've got my cars aligned, I now need to place my common damage centroid. This is the point from which the software will calculate separation velocity, so I do want to get pretty fussy with where this is. And I'm pretty happy with that. 
Now I need to place the cars at rest. The red car got clipped just behind the C-pillar in the left rear quarter panel, spun out and came to rest in this position. The bullet car hit and came through to this position. And now I'll point out these dotted yellow lines. These are the simulated tire marks from our model here. And what we want to do is get as close an agreement between the patterns of the spin out and our simulated tire marks. We can see the red tail, uh, red car got hooked, clipped here, and did a hook at the top. One rotation, two rotations, and then rotated out to his marks. Let's do the same thing with our model. One rotation, two rotations. And you'll see we've already got very good agreement between our simulated marks and the evidence. This tells us we're on the right track as far as spin out patterns are concerned. Now I need to place this car on its marks. In this case, uh, 43 and 55 represent the rear corners of the vehicle. Let's select my momentum system again. And again, by using a combination of the rotate and move grips on the car, I can get very precise with the placement. You'll see that our bullet car came in, impacted, and did a slow 180, and then rolled out to its marks here. So let's do the same with this car. A 180, and then we'll place it on its marks. 47 and 48, the rear corners of this car. Now, we're never going to be perfect as far as the simulated tire marks and the evidence are concerned, but if you're trained in momentum, you'll know that momentum doesn't care about that. Momentum cares about correct angles and correct distances. We've represented that, and we've got a visual confirmation here that our spin-outs are correct. Now we need to, uh, uh, first and foremost, adjust our friction. I dragged a Vericom across this scene and came up with a friction value of 0.42. I'll apply those to our scene. And now I'm going to adjust our um, departure angles. So what I'm interested in when I'm doing this is getting the path to go through the middle of the evidence. And I want to get agreement between my simulated tire marks and the peaks and valleys of the actual evidence. So I've got a couple of grips that I can use here to shape my departure path. There's one there and there's one right here. And I want to bring those down so they're close to our evidence. This one needs to come down a little more, doesn't it? There, I'm happy with that. And then just a little adjustment here for our vehicle at the top. So now I've got my real evidence with the total station points. I've got my real spin-out marks. I've got the real vehicles used in the case, correct angles, both departure, approach, and points of rest for distances, and I've got a live result. I can tell you that in this case, the blue car or the bullet car came in at 60 miles an hour. We're showing 60.02 as our result. And the red car, or target car, was brought in on the cable at a controlled speed of 20 miles an hour. Uh, this also uh, comes with its own report, which I'll show you briefly here. It's a 20-page report. You can show or not show whatever is of relevance to your case. Uh, the first page is the cover page of the momentum report. It shows uh, the uh, inputs that were calculated and the final outputs. Next page is a momentum vector diagram, a great way to explain angles and distances to judge and jury. This is followed by a vector sum diagram. And then the next 16 pages are all math. Uh, the um, layout for the momentum report from Ferro Reality is the top level formula is indicated at the top. In other words, what formula are we referring to to get our result? Then we show the values that were calculated and right down here are the steps to solution. In this case, post-impact separation velocities, V1 and V2, impact speeds, V1 
V1 and V2. Delta V's. PDOFs. And here's where that common damage centroid placement comes into play. This is where we're solving our separation velocities. Calculating friction due to vehicle rotation. More on that in just a second. And anytime we animate anything in ferro reality, we provide you with an animation report. We show the position of the models in XYZ and yaw pitch roll orientation every one quarter of a second. And we do that for both vehicles. Second to last page is a vehicle spec report. And the final page is a reference to momentum. Now, I had mentioned that we were going to talk about spin-out values. You do have the ability to do a very in-depth uh, analysis of your crashes, and that includes adjusting for spin. Uh, in a case like this, a crash like this, very often, you know, the left rear wheel and the red car might be completely caged or locked. We can account for that when we adjust for spin. Uh, and we'll put this value at 100, the left rear tire of our second vehicle. And you'll see we get a dramatic difference in our results. We default to 20%, uh, but you can obviously zero all of these out if there was no uh, braking at the incident. Uh, and, of course, those new um, uh, braking values uh, will also bring up an adjusted drag factor level, which is indicated here. And that will also be part and parcel of the report that we print. And there you have it, a quick overview of using linear momentum in ferro reality. Uh, if you'd like a more in-depth one-on-one demonstration, we'd be happy to arrange that for you. Just speak with your ferro hardware representative and we'll make the arrangements. Perhaps we'll talk again in the future. My name is Dean Pearson. Thanks for watching.